So today we will talk about the integumentary system. Integumentary system is one of those 11 systems of your body, right? And you know that integumentary system covers the whole body. So first, we'll see the parts of the integumentary system. Then we'll talk about the functions of the integumentary system. Uh, in our first lecture, I mentioned some important functions of the integumentary system. We'll uh, repeat that. The main organ of the integumentary system is what? The skin, right? So we'll talk about the skin first. We'll see the structure of the skin, how many layers it has. We'll see two different types of skin, thick and thin, and their structure. We'll talk about the glands in the skin, like sebaceous and sweat glands. Those are the glands of your skin. We'll talk about the structure of the epidermis and dermis. Those are two layers of the skin. Outer layer is the epidermis, and inner layer is the dermis. We'll see the structure of both. Then we'll talk about water loss, how we lose water from the body. Okay, first. The parts. Main organ or part is the skin. And accessory structures include the hair, nails and glands of the skin that is sweat and sebaceous glands right glands of the skin <coughs> functions protection by covering the body your skin protects your body from external harms make sense so by covering the body, whole body, your integumentary system or skin protects your body from the external harms. Now, three types of protection your skin provides. Chemical protection, by chemical means. Biological protection, by biological means. And physical or mechanical protections. How skin provides protection by chemical means? Skin secretes low pH secretion. That means what? Acidic or alkaline? Low pH is acidic. You already know. Remember that? So, skin secretes acidic mental or secretion. And that Acidic secretion can kill or retard the microorganisms. Okay, so that's how the chemical means the skin provides protection. Biological barriers. In your skin, you have phagocytic cells macrophages and dendritic cells. They do phagocytosis. You know what is phagocytosis, right? And gulf, right? So your skin has phagocytic cells, macrophages and dendritic cells. So they can engulf the antigens, microorganisms or dead cells of the body. That is the biological means mechanical or physical your skin has stratified squamous you remember where you will find the stratified squamous I mentioned that right so esophagus 
oral cavity, skin, right? So those areas you needs protection. The chance of friction is high, right? So skin has stratified squamous epithelium. That means many layers of what? Squamous. Flat cells like this. Many layers of flat cells. And that many layers make the skin thick and provides protection. Now, these squamous cells of the skin are filled with a protein that is called keratin. Keratin is a protein that fills the squamous cells. And this protein is highly durable. That means it cannot be destroyed easily. And another chemical also fills the squamous cells, glycolipids. So two types of chemicals are present inside the squamous cells. Keratin is a highly specialized protein and keratin is not destroyed easily, highly durable and glycolipids prevents the water from entering into the body through the skin. So it does not allow the water, prevents the water, so makes the layer waterproof. So you see these two chemicals both are important, right? Keratin provides protection and glycolipid does it allow the water or water soluble things enter into the body. That's why you can sit in water for a long time, right? Water doesn't enter into the body. If it does then it will be a problem, right? You, you will get big and it will come out. Water doesn't uh, get in. So those are protections, okay? Regulation of body temperature, another important function. How skin regulates the body temperature? You know that by sweating, right? When body gets hot, what happens? Sweating others, right? And you already know water has high heat capacity, remember that? So a small amount of water can take a lot of heat out from the body. So that lowers the body temperature. Make sense? Number one, sweating. There is another way. What happens when body temperature increases, the blood vessels of your skin get what? Dilated. Vasodilation. Make sense? Now you tell me, if the blood vessels of your skin get dilated, more or less blood flows. More blood flows in the skin, right? And from the blood, heat can easily get out through the skin. When in your body surface more blood flows, right? Heat can easily be released from the body. Is it clear? So skin lowers the body temperature by two ways. Number one is sweating, right? Number two is what? Vasodilation. That increases the blood flow in your skin. Is it clear? So if I ask you which two methods, these are the two ways. If more blood flows here, the body surface, it will be easily released. Yeah. Cutaneous sensations. In your skin, you have sensory receptors. You have sensory receptors okay, in the skin. What are those sensory receptors? You have pain receptors, touch receptors, temperature receptors, hot and cold 
warm receptors, cold receptors, right? So pressure receptors. So you have all these cutaneous or sensory receptors are present in the skin. And that's why you have those sensations. Make sense? If someone touches, you can tell, right? If something bites you, you feel pain. Are those good or bad? Good. That tells you about your, you know, environment around you. If the temperature increases, your skin can detect that, right? If something very hot touches, you can move your hand away, right? That gives you protection. And also, let you know what's going on ar around you. Make sense? So, very important. <coughs> Metabolic functions. I mentioned before, when sunlight falls on the skin, skin produces a chemical that is called cholecalciferol. It is actually a precursor of vitamin D, inactive form of vitamin D that is produced in the skin with the help of sun. Then what happens? The blood takes it to the where? Kidneys. kidneys. And inside the kidney, you have a converting enzyme that will convert the cholecalciferol to calcitriol. Okay? By converting enzyme which is only present in the kidney. That's why it should go to the kidney. To become an active form of vitamin D, that is the calcitriol. This is active vitamin D, okay? So you see, by producing cholecalciferol, your skin helps in vitamin D synthesis. Synthesis of vitamin D. Excretion. Some metabolic waste gets out from the body through the skin, through the sweating. Okay? Most of the toxic chemicals get out how? Through the yeah. urine. Right? Most of the toxic chemicals get out through the urinary system. Urine. But small amount of uh, metabolic waste get out with the sweat, like nitrogenous waste, ammonia, urea, small amount, but mostly they get out through the urine. Okay, so those are important functions of your integumentary system. Now we'll see different types of skin. There are Two ways we divide the skin. One is by looking at the thickness. By looking at the thickness, we divide the skin into thin and thick skin. Okay? And by looking at the presence of hair. We divide the skin into hairy skin and non hairy skin. Make sense? You know, in some areas you have hair, some areas you don't have, like palm, no hair, right? Sole of the foot. So, hairy and non hairy. Also, thin and thick. In your palm and sole, you have thick skin. Okay? Other areas have thin skin. The main differences between thick and thin skin is in your thick skin you have five layers in epidermis. In thin skin you have four layers in epidermis. So one layer is missing, absent in thin skin, epidermis, remember, remember this. I said where? Five or four layers in the 
epidermis of the skin. Okay? So that is the main difference. Now, skin has two layers. Both thick and thin, thin skin have two layers. Outer layer is the epidermis and inner layer is the dermis is the dermis. Okay. So these are the two layers of the skin, both thick and thin. Is it clear? Outer epidermis, inner is what? Dermis. Now if I ask you, in thin skin epidermis, how many layers you have? Four. Four. In thick skin epidermis? Five. Make sense? So, the difference is here. In thin, you have four layers in it. In thick, you have five layers. Okay, now, you can draw, this is the epidermis, this is the dermis, and dermis is much thicker than the epidermis. So this is epidermis, and this is dermis, underlying dermis. Dermis is much thicker than the epidermis. And under the dermis, you have a layer which is not a layer of the skin, remember. This is under the skin. The skin has two layers, epidermis, dermis. And this layer, which is not a layer of the skin, it has a lot of adipose tissue for fat. You have already seen it. Adipose tissue or fat. And this layer is called hypo. dermis or subcutaneous layer, hypodermis or subcutaneous layer. So skin has how many layers? Two. Outer dermis. and inner dermis. is hypodermis a layer of the skin? No. no. It is under the skin, okay, below the skin. That's why it is called hypodermis. Now, hypodermis contains a lot of what? Fat or adipose tissue, right? Hypodermis has a clinical significance. What is that? Subcutaneous injection is given in hypodermis. Another name of hypodermis is subcutaneous layer, right? So, subcutaneous injection. For example, insulin is given subcutaneous, right? Why? In fact, you have less blood flow, okay? So the drug that you inject there will stay long time because less blood is going there, right? So slowly it will take the, you know, drug from there, not quickly because less blood is going there. So it will stay there for hours, is it clear? If you inject in the muscle, intermuscular, or directly into the vein, blood, immediate, right? Muscular is faster than subcutaneous. Blood is super fast because it's immediately going to the blood, intravenous injection. Make sense? So which one is fastest? Intravenous, into the blood, right? Then moderate, intramuscular. Not too fast, not too slow, make sense? Muscle has a lot of blood flow. And which one is slow? Subcutaneous injection, okay? Uh, because less blood flows there. Anyway, so we inject the medicine here. For example, insulin. We want the insulin to stay there for a long time and work for a longer time. So you don't need to take again and again. Make sense? Otherwise, you have to take every hour, right? But it will stay there for several hours. Okay, now, epidermis has four or five layers. Four. Thin skin has four, right? Yes. Thick skin has five. five. So that's why I said epidermis has four or five layers, depending on which one you are talking about, right? Now, uh, if I see the innermost layer, it is actually a single layer of stem cells. Single layer 
of what kind of cells? Stem cells. Okay. And this layer is called stratum. Basalis or basal layer. Stratum basalis or basal layer, which is formed by a single layer of stem cells. That's why this layer is also called this layer is also called stratum germinativum. Germinativum. Germ layers, stem cell layers. And these cells can quickly multiply. You know, stem cells can quickly do what? Multiply by mitosis to produce new cells. And after these cells multiply and produce new cells, these cells start to move up because we know that superficial cells of the skin die all the time. So the shedding of the outer layer cells occur. So these new cells are being produced. That's why new cells are being produced. And they will move up, up, up. It takes about 25 to 45 days to reach to the outermost layer for a new cell. Okay? <coughs> That's how the dead cells are replaced. Then next layer is stratum spinosum. So in this layer, if you see the white is called spinosum, if you see the cells of this layer, the cells have spikes or spines, you know spines, sharp projections, right? So that's why this layer is called stratum spinosum or prickly layer. Spikes or spines. Okay, so this is stratum spinosum. Let me write it down. You have there on the slide. So this is stratum spinosum. Then you have another layer. These cells are filled with granules. Filled with what? Granules. Dot like structures. Concentrated chemicals. And that's why this layer is called a stratum granulosum. Very simple. Stratum granulosum. Okay. Then, if this is, uh, if this is a thick skin, this one has a layer that is called stratum lucida. This layer is only present in thick stratum lucida, absent in thin skin. So this is the layer that makes it five in thick skin. And since this layer is absent in thin, thin skin has four. And this layer is a clear layer. Transparent layer. Like glass, glassy layer. So this is called strata lucida. stratum lucidum, okay? Clear or transparent layer. Only present in which skin epidermis? Thick skin. Is it clear? Okay. <clears throat> then the outermost, superficial most layer of the epidermis, flat cells. Many layers of flat cells. That means what? Anybody? Flat squamous, if many layers? Stratified squamous. Very good. So this is the stratified squamous. 
So this layer is called stratum corneum. Stratum corneum. Many layers of flat cells. Okay. So from inside to outside, can you help me? This is epidermis, right? This is epidermis. If we go from deeper, innermost layer is called what? Strata? What kind of cells are these? Stem cells. Stem cells. So they do what? Multiply quickly, right? By mitosis to produce new cells. Is it clear? And that's why this layer is also called a stratum germinativum, germinal layer. We say germinal layer, germ layer, like you know, stem cell layer. Then next is what? Strata? Spinosum, right? The cells have spines or spikes. And then next is granulosa because the cells are filled with granules, highly concentrated chemicals. Two types of granules are present in this layer, <coughs> keratohyaline and lamellated granules. Those are two types of granules, keratohyaline and lamellated granules. Then you have a stratum lucidum, which is only in the thick skin, right? And outermost layer is what? Stratum corneum. corneum which is stratified what? Square mass. That means many layers of flat cells. Now, <coughs> few minutes ago, I said that these cells are filled with highly durable protein called what? Keratin. Remember that? So these are the cells heavily filled with keratin and glycolipids. So, provides protection. Okay. And many of these cells are dead cells. Some are alive, so you will see the nucleus inside. Some are empty, uh, no nucleus. Of course, the keratin and uh, glycolipids are there. But some cells you will see no nucleus because those are dead cells. So, you have both alive and dead cells here. Okay. Epidermis doesn't have any blood vessel. Dermis has blood vessels inside. So, in the dermis, you have the blood vessels because dermis is connective tissue, epidermis is epithelial tissue. So, dermis has the blood vessels, and by diffusion from underlying dermis, epidermis gets the nutrition and oxygen by diffusion from the dermis. Nutrition and oxygen enter into the epidermis. Epidermis itself doesn't have any blood flow or blood supply. Now that makes uh, sense that why the outermost layer has many dead cells, right? It's far from the dermis, right? So the, the cells are dying all the time. But new cells are being produced, which is good to replace the old cells. Okay, so the keratin and glycolipids make the skin, you know, uh, uh, protects the uh, provides the protection and waterproofness. Now, here you see uh, the picture of a thick and a thin skin. So this is a thick skin under the microscope. This is a thin skin. Now you see, let's see the layers in the epidermis. Stratum lucidum. They have only shown the stratum lucidum, which is present in thick skin, not present in thin skin. Now one thing you see here, the outermost layer, which is the stratum corneum, right? This layer is very thick in thick skin. You see here, many layers of dead uh, or alive flat cells, stratum corneum. And this is the stratum corneum of a thin skin. So now you can see 
that in thick skin the stratum corneum is much thicker than the thin skin. <coughs> Again, uh, you see those layers. Uh, so this is a thin skin because you see here four layers. They didn't show the lucida. So the stratum basal, basally, stratum spinosum. Awesome. If you look carefully, you see the spines or spikes. Stratum granulosa. These cells are filled with you see dark granules, keratohyaline or lamellated granules. Then corneum. Okay. Now the process that is called keratinization. What is that? Uh, yes, let me tell you what is that, okay? So, in the epidermis, you have one type of cells, these are called keratinocytes. Keratinocytes. And these cells, keratinocytes, produce and secrete that protein, keratin highly durable, right, special protein is produced and secreted by keratinocytes. Its name is telling you, right? Site means cell. Site means what? Cell. And keratinocytes are the cells that produce keratin. Make sense? And secrete keratin. And then what happens, you see here, these keratin molecules are highly specialized protein molecules enter into these squamous cells and fill them with keratin. So these keratin molecules enter into these squamous cells. Make sense? So now the squamous cells are filled with what? Keratin. And that squamous cells, those are filled with keratin are called Keratinized. Keratinized cells. So if I ask you which cells produce and secrete keratin? Keratinocytes, right? Okay. And which cells get filled with keratin. Squamous cells, right? Squamous cells. And they become what? After they get filled with keratin, they become what? Keratinized cells. Make sense? Make sense? Because they are getting keratin and getting filled with keratin. Keratinized cells. So two different types of cells. Make sense? Okay. Uh, and many keratinized cells are dead cells, just filled with keratin. And this process is called keratinization. How? After secretion, the keratin molecules enter into the squamous cells and make them keratinized cells. This process is called what? Keratinization. Is it clear? Okay. So how the squamous cells get filled? and with keratin and become keratinized cells. Okay. So keratin producing cells are what? Keratinocytes. Keratinocytes. And keratin field cells are? Keratinized cells. Okay. Now we'll see the dermis. So, dermis is under the epidermis, inner layer of the skin. Although dermis is much thicker than epidermis, dermis has only two layers. Outer layer is called papillary layer which gives only 20% thickness of dermis and inner 
layer is called the reticular layer, which gives how much thickness? 80%. So 20% thickness of the dermis is given by the outer papillary and 80% thickness of the dermis is given by inner reticular layer. Is it clear? Okay. <coughs> Papillary layer is formed by one type of connective tissue. Let me know if you have heard this name. Loose areolar. Have you heard that? Yes. Have you seen it? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, good. Everybody? You saw it, right? In picture and under the microscope. So loose areolar type of connective tissue forms the papillary layer, this part. Reticular layer of the dermis is formed by another type of connective tissue that is called dense what? Irregular. Okay. So this is dense irregular, this is loose areolar. Is it clear? Both are what? Connective tissue, right? Both are connective tissue. So dermis is formed by what kind of tissue if I ask you? Connective tissue. Is it clear? Epidermis is formed by what kind of tissue? Peritoneum. Stratified squamous is what? Epithelial tissue, right? Epithelial. So epidermis is epithelial and dermis is connective. Is it clear? Okay. Most of the skin structures are present in the dermis, not in the epidermis. But are those skin structures in the dermis? See here. You have glands, both sweat and sebaceous glands, right? Are present in the dermis. Blood vessels are present where? In the dermis. Epidermis doesn't have any blood vessels, right? You have nerve endings, nerves in the dermis. You have hair follicle, hair root, those are in the dermis. Make sense? You have a muscle, tiny muscle, that is called what? Erector, really muscle, right? Those tiny muscles are in the dermis. You have all those structures are in the dermis. That's why I said most of these skin structures, right, are present in the dermis. Glands, sweat and sebaceous, blood vessels, arteries, veins, right? Uh, you have the nerves, nerve endings, you have the hair follicle, hair root, okay? Uh, and the receptors, sensory receptors, for example, the pacinian corpus and the erectopili muscle. Erectopili muscle helps in goose bump. You know goose bump, right? Erection of hair. Some creatures it happens more, right? It's so very strong. Uh, when you get cold sometime, right? Here, erects. And what happens if this is your hair, you see this is your hair on the skin, lying on the skin, uh, at the follicle of the hair, that erectopili muscle is attached like this, okay? This is the muscle. So when this muscle contracts, what happens? Make sense? When this muscle contracts, pulls the hair follicle like this. So here, erection occurs. Okay, so... <coughs> Water loss. How we lose water from the body? We lose water in different ways, a number of ways. But we divide them into two types of water loss, sensible and insensible. Okay? That means what? One type of water loss you can feel that water, you are losing water from the body. Make sense? that is sensible. You can sense or feel. Is it clear? 
another type of water loss you don't feel that you are losing water from the body is it clear now you tell me urine when you urinate lot of water gets out through the urine right from the body that is sensible or insensible sensible, sensible. you can see you can feel right how about sweating sensible you you can see sweating is occurring right uh, water is getting out how about breathing insensible makes sense we lose water every time you you know expire the air water molecules are getting out from the body but you don't see that right you don't feel that so breathing speaking when you speak water molecules get out right but you don't see that so that is insensible is it clear evaporation through the skin two ways water loss occurs one is sweating right that is sensible or insensible sensible, sensible. also 24 hours even when you are sleeping by evaporation water is leaving getting out from the body through the skin is it clear so evaporation is what sensible or insensible insensible, insensible. make sense when even you are resting or sleeping water is getting out that is insensible right so through the skin if i ask you which one occurs sensible insensible or both <coughs> through the skin which way water leaves sensible insensible or both sensible. both right sweating is what sensible. sensible and evaporation insensible is it clear okay uh, how much water we uh, lose and how much water we take same same amount of water we intake same amount of or volume of water we lose from the body it's about 2.5 liter liters per day okay 2.5 liters per day <coughs> skin color this is interesting topic color of the skin is different right in different race different countries you'll see different people have different colors of the skin right and what gives the color of your skin mm -hmm. so there are few things okay the most important one is the melanin the dark pigment melanin is a dark pigment produced by one type of cells in the epidermis that epidermal cells produce melanin these are called melanocytes melanocytes So in the epidermis you have what melanocytes is it clear and melanocytes produce melanin that dark pigment keratinocytes produce what keratin, keratin that protein right highly durable protein melanocytes produce what melanin so very simple you have both in the skin right? now you tell me if someone has more melanocytes in the epidermis the skin the color of the skin will be darker makes sense because more melanin will be produced okay less skin will be light okay and <clears throat> when the skin gets sunlight the melanocytes produce more melanin okay so uh, now if you sit under the sun for a long time you see the color of the skin gradually you know it's, uh, changes little bit so you can stimulate the melanocytes by sun melanocytes are very important why because melanocytes produce that melanin and that melanin does what you see makes a layer in the skin and that 
melanin layer is called melanin shield shield and prevents the sunlight uv radiation from entering into the deeper part of the skin makes sense so it is melanin produces what a layer that is called melanin shield that prevents what uv radiation right from entering into the deeper layers of the skin so which is good right so the skin that has more melanin is more protected against uv radiation is it clear okay uh, another uh, pigment is also present in human skin but in very small amount very small amount that is called carotene have you heard that carotene is orange yellow or red colored so orange to red colored pigments present in very small amount and mainly in your palm and sole okay and 